So here it is, a car a lot of you have been waiting for is finally back. Yes, Honda has brought back the Civic after a gap of six years. And in the process, they've jumped a generation. Well, actually a generation and a half because the previous Civic, that was the eighth generation model. And this one is not just the 10th generation, but it's the facelifted version of the 10th generation, which comes in the middle of its life cycle. So this Civic is actually bang up to date. Also, the Civic comes with a diesel engine, which wasn't there earlier. So Civic has a lot to live up to. It was our 2007 auto car car of the year. It was a very futuristic car. And at its time, it was the best seller. So can this Civic weave the same magic its predecessor did? For starters, the Civic looks really distinctive. And though it's not as mold-breaking as the previous car, it's a car that will certainly draw attention. The sculpted bonnet looks great, the grille looks strong, and it's flanked by high-tech looking lights. And there are lots of cuts and creases across the bodywork to give it character. What really stands out though is the way the roofline sharply drops at the rear, giving the Civic a coupe-like look. And that distinctive rear is nicely rounded off with the striking C-shaped rear lights. Top spec Civics come with 17-inch alloys which look great on this car and help the overall proportions. So as you can see, it's retained its sporty looks and that hunkered down stance. But this time, Honda has very wisely jacked up the ground clearance because that was a serious issue with the earlier car. Now to get to the business end of the Civic, which is the driver's seat. Now the Civic, like before, has a great driving position. But this time you've got an electrical powered seat, so it's really easy to find the right driving position. The instrumentation, digital this time, superb clarity, great visibility outside. You sit nice and low and the dashboard, the way it's designed and the sort of high center console, it just wraps itself around you and that really makes you feel special. But the sporty feel hasn't come at the cost of practicality because the Civic abounds with a lot of storage space. Well, you've got an electronic parking brake over here, which is a first in its class. But what that does is it frees up the center console. You don't have the lever anymore. So there's really lots of storage space in here. The glove box also pretty spacious. A nice rubberized shelf over here, large door bin. So really you can put a lot of stuff in there. The only issue is that the USB port is a little difficult to access, but once you do, you're good to go. But before driving off, let's have a look at the equipment list. It's pretty comprehensive by segment standards with the likes of LED headlamps, a power driver seat, a digital instrument cluster, a sunroof and six airbags. And there's also Honda's innovative lane watch camera feature. There are also some segment first features like a remote engine start, the car auto locks when you walk away with the key and of course the electronic parking brake we just spoke about earlier. However, there are some features the Civic misses out on that you'll find in rivals like cool seats, driver seat memory, front parking sensors and a proximity based boot opening. Now, let's see how it drives. So this petrol Civic I'm driving, it comes with a 1.8 litre engine. It's actually the same 1.8 litre as in the previous Civic, but this one's got more power. It's around 140 horsepower. The intake and exhaust manifolds have been tuned. It's a little bit more responsive as well. But the thing is that this engine only comes with a CVT. You can't have it with a manual because Honda globally do not offer this engine with a manual transmission at all. And yes, a CVT. I was a bit worried too because a car with sporting pretensions, CVT is something you associate with a jazz runabout. But I have to say that Honda has done an amazingly good job with this transmission. Yes, there is a wee bit of rubber band effect, but quite honestly, this transmission is quite responsive 
and uh, the steps they've put in seven speed they feel like a, almost like a manual gearbox when uh, you use the paddles the only issue is that this engine has got a really flat mid-range there's just no mid-range punch at all you have to rev it to get the most out of it and that leads me to ask a question Honda why don't you give the 1.5 turbo at least as an option you want that turbo mid-range punch especially in a car that begs to be driven hard like this one but when you don't want to drive it hard and simply cruise along you'll notice how quiet the Civic is this engine is really refined there's also hardly any wind or suspension noise and it's only on a coarse surface that road noise can be heard dynamics this is one area the Civic really shines now dynamically Honda have really got it spot on with the Civic again and it will bring a smile to your face because it starts with the steering which has got a lovely heft to it it's very responsive even off center and chucking it into corners is it's absolutely superb fun Even the ride is pretty impressive because you're riding on those large 17 inch wheels and the whole suspension has been retuned. Don't forget there's a multi link suspension. Honda have really put a lot of effort into the suspension tuning and they've even raised the ride height because you know you've got a lot of these nasty speed breakers and that's the question everyone has been asking how is the Civic over speed breakers because that was a big problem with the earlier Civic it used to scrape its belly on even the mildest of them but I have to say this one there's been no problem so far the speed breakers we've encountered they've been uh, pretty okay and that extra ride height about 20 millimeters more than the global Civic so this is up to about 171 mm of ground clearance it seems to be okay even on bad roads the Civic just coasts over everything it's amazingly stable at speed the damping is superbly judged with the right amount of stiffness without feeling harsh in the least now the Civic it comes into its own on a twisty road like this we are charging up to Dundee Hills and it's just a delight through the corners the steering pin sharp very responsive and that low CG keeps the whole car quite flat through the corners but it's when you're powering up the hill that you do feel a bit of that rubber band effect from the CVT it does groan a bit because you are ringing every rev out of this engine and yeah it's at times like this you do wish you had a manual okay that's enough fun for now and it's time to calm down which means having a go in the diesel Civic which I suspect will appeal more to the chauffeur driven lot so let's start at the back you have to drop yourself into the rear seat of the Civic which is quite low so for elderly people to get in and out could be a bit of an effort but once you're in here I have to say the space is quite terrific I mean legroom is fantastic and even the seat position is pretty good typically you'd sit in a knees up position but because the floor is quite low you're quite comfortable good under thigh support headroom yes it will be a bit of an issue for tall people because the roof the way it slopes it really cuts into the headroom right at the back and the window also is a bit small not the best chauffeur driven car you don't even have any charging sockets and if you remember the previous Civic it even had audio controls at the back over here that's gone but you get a pair of cup holders let's have a look at the boot too which is far more spacious than the Civic's stubby boot lid suggests and as you can see it's big enough for a couple of large bags time to get back into the front seat now this Civic diesel it has the same 1.6 diesel as in the CRV which produces 120 horsepower now that didn't seem like much in the CRV but in this Civic which is around 300 kilos lighter and has this six speed short throw gearbox it feels a lot more energetic a lot more sprightly so it's fairly responsive it revs fairly freely you do miss that punch in the mid-range that kick which turbo diesels are known for 
this is more of a linear power delivery and what blunts performance a bit also is that the gearing is pretty tall it's on the tall side obviously done for fuel economy which incidentally is class leading so is the new Civic a generation and a half better than its predecessor? Well, the engines, they could have been a bit stronger. Both the diesel and the petrol could do with a bit more punch. And I wish we had more transmission options in the sense I wish the petrol had a manual and the diesel had an automatic. And if you're looking at a purely chauffeur driven car, the Civic isn't actually ideal. But if you're looking for a car to drive, I can tell you the Civic will put a smile on your face like not many other cars in its category. It's so hunkered down. It has handles brilliantly, it's very sporty in the way it feels and show it a twisty road and you won't stop smiling. So in that sense, the Civic does live up to what its loyalists expected to and with this new generation, given the breadth of its appeals, it could attract many more fans into its fold.